Hello and welcome to the Bath Studio School. I'm Gabriel and today we are interviewing Emilio pimentel Reed, who is running in the 2019 local elections as a Conservative councillor. Welcome Emilio, hope you're well. Thank you. Um, great to be here, Gabriel. Thank you very much. Uh, Emilio is an editor and an interior stylist and a brand consultant. So can you please tell us some more about that background? Yes. So as, as an editor in my industry, I write about trends and trend direction, basically what is happening in my, in my market. Creativity and design is a very important industry for this, this country. Mm -hmm. And I work with wallpaper brands, fabric brands, retailers, um, advising them on creating the image that they're going to be putting forward for the season ahead. Yeah. Um, as, as a brand consultant, I, I sit down with, with buyers and we discuss mm -hmm. the things that they, have, that they have bought. We discuss the things that may be missing from their mix yes. so that they have the, the most dynamic selection when we walk into the, the shops. Okay. So, um, to politics, what made you choose to run as a Conservative councillor? Well, first, I want to explain what made me want to run as a... Uh, uh, as in, a in general, counselor. I live in Lansdowne, <laughs> and when I first moved to Lansdowne, I, um, there were a lot of issues that we as residents were concerned about, and I discovered that we didn't have a residence association. Mm -hmm. So I, I started one. And over the past several years, we've been dealing with, with effectively with local issues and making our local voices heard. Yeah. My um, councillors, Patrick and Kettle Jones and Tony Clark are now stepping down and they have always listened to us and been very supportive. And I want to make sure that we end up with a councillor who lives locally, who understands the issues that concern us. And because I've already been dealing with local issues for, for several years, yeah. I think I'm very you know, qualified for that. Um, I am running as a conservative. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about me. I was, I'm, I was born in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. I've chosen to make this country home yeah. and Bath um, home. And I find that the conservatives are very in inclusive and the conservatives welcome people from different backgrounds. So it was an, an, a natural place for me to go to. I really like some of the values that you at the school had by your front mm -hmm. door. And I think that a lot of them are very conservative values, like dynamism and entrepreneurship and getting things done. And that's why I'm running as a conservative. And I'm glad that the school values, you know, echo my feelings. So um, now that you're running for council, do you have a replacement for you lined up for your residence association? Um, we actually had our spring drinks um, this week and we added a couple of people to our um, committee. Yeah. And so um, we actually need as, as, as many people involved as we can get. So um, yeah. um, I'm, I take this election very seriously and I am knocking on doors, but I'm also being practical and getting people involved locally in my residence association um, see, with a view of seeing what happens in, in May. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, obviously, your ward, Lansdowne, is quite a central ward in Bath. Yes. Uh, do you think, because it's in the centre of Bath, it may be more prioritised over ru more rural wards in Bath and North East Somerset? No. No? No. <laughs> Can you tell us some of the things that affect your ward, like some of the major problems? Absolutely. Um, we have a lot of speeding in my ward. One of the reasons why I got involved is because um, we had a 20 mile an hour zone on our street, um, which was put in place by the previous administration. It cost a million pounds to roll out this policy and the signage had not been done properly. And it took us two years to get the signage corrected. So basically the police could not enforce it until the repeaters were up and the signs were up. And but that's one of the issues in our area. We obviously have um, um, rat runs. We have, um, you know, people who live locally who, who don't recycle um, pro properly. There, there's a range of things that are typical of living in a modern city.
And it's so important that those of us who live there have civic pride and get involved. Okay. So um, I found some information recently mm -hmm. uh, about the Conservative Council choosing to cut 100% of all arts funding mm -hmm. by 2020. Mm -hmm. I was wondering as a creative person what you thought of that. Well, as a creative person, my first thought is to actually get involved and run for council mm -hmm. because we have a lot of doctors and lawyers and business people getting involved and that's amazing. But we need a lot more creative people getting involved so that we can put our views across. And so, again, we're able to contribute great um, solutions to the creative solutions to the problems affecting the city and people need to understand how important the arts are to, to Bath. From a, a budget point of view, when I decide what I'm going to do for um, a weekend, I look at my yeah. bank balance and I go, oh, I can do this or I can do that. And sometimes there isn't money for everything. And I know that um, we spent 80% of our budget on adult and children's social care. Mm -hmm. And I know that the council right. have, has had to make a very difficult decision when it comes to that. As a creative person, I love living in Bath because there are exhibitions happening in, you know, all the time. There's a lot of creative things happening in the city. And as a creative person, we make things work. So it, it's a tough decision and would I, as a person, want to see an increase in, in funding? Yes, I think I would and a lot of people would, but I think the council is having to make tough decisions that aren't always popular because they don't have the funding. Okay, that's absolutely fair enough. So, moving on to another topic. Yes. Uh, what do you plan to do to help the underfunding and overcrowding in local schools in Bath? Because many schools in Bath are oversubscribed and um, the t quality of the teaching is therefore compromised. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see done? Uh, I would like maybe to see uh, the amount of schools available widened. So rather than everyone being encouraged to go to just one school, they have more options. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, the council has um, worked very hard to increase funding to local schools and to also make that funding um, e equitable. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I agree with you. The, the, the lower the student numbers, the better education um, you, you, you get. And the council believes in supporting education. OK. So if um, money is being put so much in schools. Uh, why is the Bath Studio School being allowed to close when obviously creative subjects like TV and film and mm -hmm. digital media are things that the UK is very good at mm -hmm. and exports all over the world? Mm -hmm. Well, I completely agree with you that the skills that you learn in a creative environment are an amazing asset to, um, to businesses. And I understand that the Academy trust is closing the school because there wasn't enough uptake. And I think that part of the issue is that it's not just students who need to be educated, I think also parents need to be educated as to the value of a creative education. I have a degree in economics in addition, to my, well. <laughs> in addition to my degrees in, in, in fashion design and, and my master's in history of art. Yeah. And my parents wanted me to be practical, whatever that means. And I don't think they understood that you can make a career and contribute to a dynamic professional environment, having a creative background. And I would want more parents to encourage their children to pursue um, their aspirations in creative fields. And I think businesses really need those skills. And you rightly said, we, in this country, we export ideas and creativity. You know, we export amazing video, um, film, architecture, yeah. and that is supported um, by schools. So the reason why I am running is because my voice as a creative person needs to be heard. Yeah. Uh, that's all very well what you've said, but um, the Bath Studio School is the 24th studio school to be closed uh -huh. since the 
Conservative Parliament's inception of them. Uh -huh. And the studio schools that are thriving around the country are yes. the ones that focus on STEM subjects rather than creative subjects. Mm -hmm. So is there not some sort of thing that can be done to save the creative studio schools over the STEM schools? Well, not over the STEM schools, but as well as. Well, I mean, I think that that is, uh, on a personal level, that is something that I would want to, that I would want to research more. But I, I read a very interesting article this week, and it talked about how um, success of schools is, is, you know, for example, universities yeah. is judged on how much um, people make after they graduate and all these other parameters that cannot necessarily be quantified in our in our field. So if somebody had looked at how much money I was going to make in my career, maybe they would have never educated me. But actually, um, I, I, I am lucky that um, I have continued to find things that interest me and have allowed me to continue um, having a, a, a successful and fulfilling yeah. life. So what are your views on the divisive clean air zone charge? Well, there isn't a clean air zone charge for, for cars. But I can tell it's, you my view is... It's a concept being brought in, though, isn't it? Not for cars. So maybe can you, you can explain this to me, because I feel like there might be a hole in my understanding. Somewhere. Oh, OK. So first, let me give you your, my views on the clean air zone. My fellow residents and I actually campaigned to be included in the clean air zone, because we thought it was very important to be, to be part of it. Yeah. And we didn't want our neighborhood to be turned into a, a rat run, and we didn't want any additional cars um, coming through. And, and, and some of my neighbors I know um, said that they were um, fine with you know, paying additional uh, money. But the reality is that the majority of, of people um, felt that, um, that, that, that that wasn't fair. Mm -hmm. And the council has done extensive... Um, research, and we had a, the biggest possible reply from Bath residents as to what they wanted, and so um, cars are not going to be paying any charge. Right. I was under the impression that the clean air zone charge, if one is not in the clean air zone charge, that one pays to be able to go through it. The only people who are paying are um, vans, lorries and buses and in my neighborhood we also are campaigning to have um, a width restriction in our area so that we don't get all of those huge trucks that um, yeah. are somehow appearing all over all over bath so i'm, I'm very happy that um, a clean air zone is being is being introduced obviously as cars develop we will all be driving an electric car soon so um, that won't be a, a problem you know going forward I love cars that's yeah. one of my my passions as, as well and it's good to see that that the car companies are keeping up with technology yeah. okay um, do you what do you think of the idea of maybe extending the climate change strike to the workplace as well as the school in what way so maybe you could bring out the council on strike or um, some of your uh, employees in your council on strike? Well, I mean, I think... Um, or would it not work if you were I striking when you were the <laughs> lawmaker? Well, I mean, having, having watched the last um, council session, I think that everybody agreed that um, the council needs to um, do the most that they can to um, promote the environment. And I think that this is one of the... Luckily, this is one of the things that everybody yeah. across, all, well, at least um, the Conservatives and Labour, you know, and, and the Greens agreed. The issue were, were all aligned. Well, my example of striking from the council was a bad example. Um, it's probably a better example to say, would it help for maybe office workers to strike in the same way the students are? I don't know. I mean, I don't think we all need to strike to make a difference. I think we can all make a difference in our daily daily lives. I, I think that each individual has the power in them to um, choose not to buy bottled water, to choose to bring their own bags to the supermarket. And I think that we don't need a million strikes. We actually need 
action. Yeah. And you, you don't need all your coworkers to take a day off from work. You actually maybe need them to carpool and, you yeah. know, be proactive in that way. So you're saying that striking may be better for uh, school children who may not have so much power over everything and um, adult workers may be changing their lifestyles as their way of doing their bit. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm an uncle, and my uh, niece is, is six, and my nephew is four. And they're very aware of the environment, and they're also changing their behavior. But I think it was great that the um, children decided to strike, because I think it, it shows maybe parents and grandparents that, you know, they're, that those kids that are in their lives care yeah. about our planet. OK. So now we're nearing the end of the interview. Uh, I, in this election, the number of seats in the council is being cut from 65 to 59? Yeah. yeah? Um, are you, do you think that the Conservatives are going to still be able to hold power? Is this reduction in seats going to affect anything? Well, do you know what? Yeah. I am running for my ward in the ward that I live in. And my concern at the moment is to actually get... Um, me elected mm -hmm. in the ward that I live so that I can make a difference locally. And as long as you have people who are passionate about where they, um, where, where they live, that is the main concern for me in this election. Yeah. So regardless of party, you're being non-partisan about it. What it's worth, I think it's good to be non-partisan in a vote. Well, because I, if, if I think people... we all need to work together. So, um, yeah. in, from, from the way that I answer your question is, I'm, I'm not a politician, I'm a resident, and I'm running to make a difference in yeah. my ward. So, I am not a, a chess piece where I'm thinking, oh, if that person wins and that person wins, la la la. You know, do I want the Conservatives to win everywhere where they're running? Absolutely, I do, because I believe in what they're doing. But I am actually running for my ward, and my focus is is my ward yeah. and, and my neighbours. And you're going to do everything you can for them. For them. Right, well, so final question now. Yes. Uh, All right. uh, what makes you feel you are the ideal candidate for your ward? For my ward? Yeah. Well, because I've already been working for my ward for the past several years, standing up for the issues in, 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 in my ward. So we've, we've been able to get signs changed. We've been able to get organized to start protecting our park. I've been partnering with um, World Heritage Bath to um, you know, encourage them to repaint the um, old signs in our in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I've been liaising with, I mean, on and on and on it go with the police to deal with um, issues of visible drug dealing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already doing it. Yeah. So you're, it's like you're already doing the things that's the job will entail. I've, I've already been doing a, a lot, and I have been working with my existing councillors to get our yeah. voice heard. And I want to make sure that at the end of the day, we get someone who cares. And that's why I'm here. OK. Thank you very much for your time, Amelia. Oh, thank you it's so much great. for your time. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, this has been the Bath Studio School. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.